In this video, I'm going to show how to use the App Engine server that I've created as a project server. Now, there's actually two project servers. The one I'm going to use here is the sort of demo one, and there's another one that will be announced in class on how to uh, access uh, the other way. So, to begin with, let's go to the demo server. So, this is at demo project server one two three four dot appspot dot com. So here we can see all of the sort of functionality that's available to us on the control panel. Now the control panel will ev evolve over time, uh, but for the moment it's got at least the basic functionality. Everything is going to be dependent on an app ID, shown here. So what I do is I put the app ID in here, and then it will display, right here, all the data that it just got back from the server. Because I haven't put in an app ID in yet, and so nothing's coming back. Now I've got to know what app ID to put in. You can choose your own app ID for your app. It's just a basic string, um, but the best way to do, come up with one is to use a GUID. So I'm going to search for a GUID creator. Eh, generator, sure. Online GUID generator. So a GUID is a globally unique identifier. It's not guaranteed to be globally unique, at least not when generated from this online generator, but it is quite unlikely that you'll end up with a duplicate. Uh, it's a very massive number. Uh, the probability of a duplicate is very, very low. So I'm going to generate just one GUID here, and I'll use that. So go back here. I'll put this into my field. And we see here it's now generating, showing us all the data associated with that GUID, of which there is nothing which is as expected because we haven't used it before. So now what I can do is I can start to enter data. So I can enter a item ID. So I'll start with like 101 and hello world. I'll submit the change. Now the data's gone in the database. I'm going to have to display again because it wasn't in the database when we did the query. And here we have all that information on what we just entered. We have the exact time that we entered it, at least according to Google server. We've got the uh, GUID that we entered it under, and then I've got the item ID I entered and the data. So I can add in a few other things as well, item ID 102. Again, these item IDs are just strings. I can put anything I like in there, as is the data. So hello world, this is the second data. And sometimes it'll come up, sometimes we'll have to do a refresh. And 103, uh, now is the end. So that allows me to see the data that's sitting on the server. That's how we get the data in. Getting the data out, we'll see in just a second. This at least allows you to see what the state of the server is before you try and debug it on your Android project. Now I can also delete data. Now there's two ways I can do that. So I've got to put in here the app ID. I've got to specify an ID that I want to delete. So let's delete that second piece of data, that 102. 102, I can put in the ID here. And then I've got to type in yes, all capitals, just to make sure I know that I'm you know, doing what I wanted to do. That's the only safety on this. You can delete whatever you like on that. So delete all, oops, that should be, I'll change that. That'll be delete for this ID. So now that has uh, need to get the good back. So let me copy this, come back here, paste in the good, and now we've removed that one piece. So that one piece of information, 102, is gone. I can also delete everything. I'll put in the app ID. I can here type all, and then yes. And then again, click the, un the poorly named button. I'll paste the GUID back in, display data, and there's nothing. So I was able to delete it all. Now the one last piece of functionality I want, or a couple last on this show page at least, is the edit. So let's come up with a you know a new any number we like. Let's say 101, and I can put you know hello. There's 101. Now I can change that. I can enter the same number again, 101, or the same string rather, and I can change it to hello world. Query. And there it is. Hello world. I can add another one, and this could be any string I like, such as up, up, down. And the data is uh, the code. And then I could change that. Up, up, down was my key, my item ID. And then uh, the correct code. And you can see I can start to make any changes I like.
So this is very flexible. You can use anything you like for the item ID or the data. Um, you can encode them as XML. You can put them in as uh, JSON. You can do anything you like on that for particularly the data. Uh, the XML or the item ID you probably want to keep fairly simple. Um, either a locally uh, created GUID or a name or something like that. So that shows us how we can create the data. So let's add one more item here. Let's add, uh, I'm going to show you the sorting. So let's add a, a number 50 and early data, I'll call it. And I can add another one here for 500, late data. And then I'll search, and it'll show us all of this. And hmm, it doesn't seem to be working on this, but it should be sorting by the item ID. I'll have a look at that as to what it's going on, doing there. But it should be sorting this by the item ID. Now there's one other thing that we can do with this. So rather than just uh, using the user page here, of course our Android tools are not going to want to parse HTML. So you're going to create a new tab, go back here, and instead of going to the uh, standard page, the user page, I'm going to go to query uh, XML query uh, .cgi. Now this is a way that we can query the database through just a get request. And what I also have to do here is I have to tell it what app ID. App ID is equal to, and now I need that app ID again, and we'll put that in. So this kind of tells us we want our app ID probably to be uh, something that can be put into a get request. So here I have the XML that's generated. So we're going to the XML query.cgi URL effectively. And it returns to us all of the data that we were seeing before on this front page. So remember, we got these four elements here. Here I've got these, the four elements again, except now it's in XML format. So the basic format is we've got the records, surrounds everything. I've got a record tag. And on that, I've got a couple attributes. In fact, three attributes here. The first one is the app ID. Next one is the timestamp. And then I get the item ID. Then the text involved is whatever data you provi you provided. So that text could be anything. If you wanted to store XML data, you could try uh, slipping that in, and then you'd have to process that and parse it when you get it out. If you just put in non-XML data, you can get it out quite directly. OK, so that's the demo I wanted to show here. That shows us how to create a new GUID, how to uh, view data, edit data, insert data, delete data, and then look at it through the XML view. This is incredibly handy when you're debugging. If you can't figure out why your app is getting the wrong data, have a look at what's actually on the server. That should tell you where it's coming from.